Hello, welcome to Chapter 7. In Chapter 7, uh, we're dealing with probability distributions. So, um, if I want to find the mean and standard deviation of this probability distribution, the mean is the same thing as expected value. So, what I'm going to do is the mean of x, I'm just going to multiply all these down. So, I have 0.15, I have 0.75, this one is what? Um, 2.1, this one is 1.8, and this one is 3.3. Uh, and then once I have those, 0.15 plus 0.75 plus 0.2, 2 2.1 plus 1.8 plus 3.3 gets us to 8.1. So 8.1 is going to be the mean. Now, if I want to find the standard deviation, what I have to take is the square root of the sum of all of the x values minus the mean times the probability. And uh, so what this is, is you take the x value, 3, oh, and I forgot a little squared up here, 3 minus 8.1, square it. Multiply it by the probability is 0 0.05 plus 5 minus 8.1 square it times 0 0.05 plus 7 minus 8.1 and so on and so on all the way down. But really we don't do much of that. What we do is we take out our trusty calculators and uh, we type in this data into the edit. So we have 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11 and our probability is 0 0.05 0 0.15 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.3 and what we do is uh, stat we're going to calculate and this we type in L1 comma L2 and when we hit enter our mean is 8.1, our standard deviation is 2.4. Now, if we were on an AP test, we'd want to show some work so they know where we get these values. However, um, when we just need to find the values, use our calculator. Now, a uniform distribution is a distribution that goes straight across, and when they don't tell you the idea is that it goes from 0 to 1. The probability that a value is between 0.4 and 0.9 is just the area in here, which is this times 1. But, <coughs> excuse me, which is just 0.5. If we have a random variable and we're applying some transformation to it, the mean will be moved with that transformation. And if we're adding two thing, we're doing things to two different random variables, it, the mean would be the mean of the x plus the mean of the y. So what that means is if I have the mean of um, some value x is 58 centimeters, and if I want to convert that to inches, I would say maybe the mean is 0 plus, I don't know what the conversion for inches is to centimeters, I should figure Turns out uh, it's 0 plus 0 0.3, 0.3937. So um, that's how we're going to convert from centimeters to inches. So um, the new mean is going to be A, which is 0, because we're not adding anything to it, plus 58 times 0.3937. So the new mean would be 28.3937. 8346 inches. Now, in another situation, um, if I want to find the means, the mean of something else maybe is 60 centimeters. So the mean of, if I take those and I put them together, some, one thing from the x, one thing for the y, the mean is going to be both those added together, which is 60 plus 58, which is 118 centimeters. Um, however, the rules aren't so easy for um, for uh, 
uh, standard deviations and variances. Well, variances is pretty easy. Uh, if you take the variance of one thing and you apply a transformation, you take this number b squared, b, and you square it. So I take my 0.3937 and I square it, and that, which becomes 1.15499, so 0.155, and we multiply it by the old standard deviation. Let's say the old standard deviation of x was 3. So my standard deviation, let's just call this the new standard deviation, is 3 times that answer. So that would be 0.465 when we're dealing with inches, going off of our previous example. And if we go off of our previous example, um, which we will still have the standard deviation 3, maybe the standard deviation of the y was 5. Um, now if I want to find the standard deviation of both of them together, you take 3 squared plus 5 squared, and then you square root them. Uh, and that is our Pythagorean theorem for statistics. And so that's 9 plus 25, which is 34. So the new standard deviation of both those things occurring is going to be the square root of 34, which is going to be 5 point something, 5.83. Now, in it, if I had took the standard deviation of x minus y, I would do the same thing, and that's 5.83. So it doesn't matter if I'm adding the two variables or subtracting the two variables, I get the same answer in the end. Now, uh, when we're using this in a situation, if x is normally distributed with a mean and standard deviation, and y is normally stand is just normally distributed, mean standard deviation, what's probably x plus y is greater than 95, well, uh, probability that both those things happen are above 0.85, we need to find the mean of x plus y and the standard deviation of x plus y. So the mean of x plus y, add 50 plus 30, that's going to be 80. Standard deviation, we take 8 squared plus 6 squared, and square root it. 64 plus 36, that's 100, square root that, and get 10. So the standard deviation of x plus y is 10. So now we come back to our problem, and now we can convert this to a z-score. And now we take our value minus our mean over our standard deviation. So that's the probability that z is greater than 15 over 10, which is 1.5. So then you do a normal CDF from 1.5 to infinity, and you get probability is 0 0.0668. If they said what's the probability that x is greater than y, We'll just subtract y on both sides, so x minus y is greater than 0. Now we have to find a mean of x minus y, a standard deviation of x minus y. The mean of x minus y is mean of x minus mean of y, which is going to be 20. The standard deviation of x minus y is 8 squared plus 6 squared, square root it, which is the same as up here, which is 10. So now I'm going to take my z-score, and take my value minus my mean over my standard deviation of 10. And that's going to be the probability of my z is greater than negative 20 over 10, which is negative 2. Negative 2 to infinity. And that's 0.977. All right, so now if we have Tom and George in a golf tournament, what's the probability? Do Tom golfs with a normal distribution with a mean of 110, a standard deviation of 10? and t George golfs with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 8, what's the probability Tom will score a lower number to beat George in the tournament? The probability that Tom will score lower than George is probably Tom minus George is less than 0, which is the probability. Before we move any forward further, we need to find the mean standard deviation of Tom minus George. Uh, 110 minus 100 is 10. Now the standard deviation, we take 10 squared plus 8 squared, square root them. So that's the square root of 164. So that's 12.8. So that's the probability that my z is less than 0 minus my mean over 
for my standard deviation of 12.8. So that's negative 10 over 12.8. That's the probability that my z-score is less than negative 0.78125. And if I go from negative infinity all the way up to that value, that is 0.2173. Now, uh, that's enough for the chapter.